This is a meeting of the Cherokee County School District Board of Trustees. Thank you to all the visitors we have tonight. If you will, please stand for a prayer followed by a pledge of allegiance. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in here to serve the children of Cherokee County. We ask, Lord, that you give us the wisdom and knowledge as on the matters before us, that we might make uh, correct decisions in all that takes place. And we just pray, Lord, that everything that takes place is in your will. And all we do, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Attention. <clears throat> Salute. Pledge. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. And just so everyone knows as well, we have Dr. Nix and uh, Mr. Surratt on the phone tonight with us. Um, they couldn't be here, but they were kind enough to join us on the phone. Next item on the agenda, tax, TAN Tax Anticipation Resolution Notice. Mr. Mike Gallagher. On the spot, right off the bat. Right off the bat. Appreciate that. Get you in now. Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen, the board, it's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Um, what you have for consideration tonight is a resolution for the issuance of a tax anticipation note in an amount not to exceed $15 million. Um, the district probably ha hasn't done a TAN in several years. Um, and what a TAN is, is a short-term debt instrument or borrowing that's used for cash flow timing differences. Um, so if we don't have a general fund that's big enough to carry us through the whole year until our property taxes came in. The county had a little change in things where they used to just give the district money or advance funds to the district, um, which was a very unique and very good situation. Not a lot, no, not very many districts across the state have that kind of flexibility. Um, the county has, has let us know a couple years ago that they really don't, they can't be in that position and it's causing a cash strain for them. And so, you know, we're going to have need y'all to figure out how to manage your money. And so this is a tool to allow us to make those payments because y'all have these new teachers that will be starting up in the new school year. you got to pay those teachers every month, but, you know, throughout the term of their contract. And a big chunk of your money does come in in the form of property tax revenue. And we don't get that property tax revenue to match up exactly the way it does with the uh, with when your payroll and other expenses. So it, it's just a tool to allow you to bridge that gap. And when the when the funds come in in December, January, February timeframe, um, the TAN pays back its due um, at that point in time. And so it's going to be done through the. SCAGO TAN program, South Carolina Association of Government Organizations. So what'll happen is the, the TAN from your district, if you approve it, will be bundled together with TANs from various other school districts across the state and sold as one big offering instead of a bunch of small individual or medium-sized deals. And I'm happy to answer any questions on that. There's a whole lot to throw at you. Um, but, if, but if you think about it, it's, it is a, just a tool to allow us to fund our budget as the expenditures come in for our cash flow, and then we'll be able to pay it back when our property taxes come in. Now you said $15 million. Is this the same each year, or did it increase this year, or? I'll to we have it. not taken out a plan uh, since I've been here several years prior. Okay, okay. Because the, the county, like you said, floods us every year. Right. But near the end of the year, you're October, November, December, we're technically cash flow wise in the red. And this will offset that. And then when we get our tax dollars from the treasurer's office in December, January, and February, mm -hmm. it'll be paid back. Okay. And then you should have enough money to carry you through the rest of the county, the rest of the fiscal year until June 30. The 15 million came from us doing a <coughs> cash flow statement of this past year and what we were running then. And I thought of slight inflation because everything obviously has gone up and came up with no more than 15 million. What amount do we typically receive as far as the property tax? 
Um, is it like an average? It starts more in December, and we got, if I'm not mistaken, uh, about four to five million in December. We got almost eleven in January, and then two to three more in February and into March, and then it spikes back off, and you don't even get a million a month. I'm okay. sure. So the bulk of it comes in right in December, January, February. Well, so, so more than enough to cover. More more than enough to cover. You saying should be, I've heard that several times. So in the event that it doesn't, what we we just back to doing this again? Well, hopefully we will actually pay out the entire fifteen million. That's gonna cover all of our operating expenses and whatever's left would would obviously be there to pay too along with the taxes. And we are trying to be a little bit conservative because this is new to all of us. Okay. So we are trying to be a little conservative so that we don't get in a bind where payroll doesn't get met or something. I mean, you can't, right. can't get in that spot. The last, thing, the last thing you want to do is not be able to pay your teachers. Absolutely. Exactly. So this is, this will give you, you know, um, Ms. Moore, she went through running the cash flow analysis and determined that's an amount that um, she feels comfortable with for the district. Okay. Is this something that has to be redone yearly now, I put it? Yes. Every year? Yeah. And it's going to be based on the fixed interest at the time or so, yeah, what will happen is on, um, the fifth, on the 15th of September, we will competitively bid this transaction out and it will close on the Whatever market. it is. And, yeah, whatever the market is that day, however many bids we get, um, and we'll you know, clearly take the lowest bid. Right. And it's usually really good because, yeah. like you said earlier, it's the whole state's going in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got multiple districts going in. I just saw on there on our, not necessarily on this end, but I did say where with this change, I did say where the county was charging us a fee to collect our taxes, too. They are, and if you've paid a tax notice lately, like I just paid for an auto one last month, uh, if you mail it in, it now goes to Atlanta to a lockbox. So and so there's a fee to process that, and they import those files and post those payments. So, and they're passing that fee on to us. Right. Any other questions for Mr. Gallagher while he's here? Mike, this uh, TAM, it, <clears throat> like I say, it's not to exceed 15 million, right? Right. Okay. Uh, I mean, if we don't use it, don't need the full 15, we don't have to take the full 15. Is that correct? You will. You have between now and the 15th of September. So this, this authorizes up to that amount of money. Mm -hmm. And let's say that, you know, something between now and the 1st of September, um, the district looks at where their cash position is and it's better than what you thought it might be. And you say, we don't want to issue the 12 million. You know, whatever amount you do issue, yes, that is that is put out. Um, you know, we'll explore the options. Some years we look at having investment agreements. So the money is fully invested and earning interest the whole time. Um, it, it really is going to depend upon the market as we get into September. It, whether we have a, a big group investment or it's one of the things we say, put it into the uh, the treasurer's LJ fund. So you're actually, what you're saying is, if we say 15, we're held at 15 then. Yeah. Is that correct? I mean, do you, do you pay back actually 15 mil or I mean, how much do you end up paying back? Because I'm pretty sure it has interest in what, so what right. do you anticipate? You'll pay back 15 million plus interest. So usually that's about what? Well, I mean, it's not a usual situation. This is our first time, but that would be approximately what? Depends on what the rate. Depends on what the rate comes in. Okay. You don't have a range? Not right now. All right. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Any other questions for uh, Mr. Gallagher? No, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate your uh, uh, explaining this. It's a confusing thing, but I get it. <laughs> it's just uh, it's just hard to explain to somebody else. Uh, but I appreciate you coming and explaining it. And, uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Um, really quick, this was omitted uh, from my list here. So we need a motion to approve the board agenda. <laughs> Do we have a motion to approve the board agenda? Make a motion to approve the board agenda. Motion, Ms. Shepard. Second. Second, Ms. Dawkins. All in favor? All right, that is unanimous.
now we can continue. 2022-23 uh, general fund budget first read. We need, we need to take it. Oh, all right. We need board board approval requested for the TAN tax anticipation resolution notice. Do I have a motion? We approve the TAN tax anticipation resolution notice. I'll make a motion to approve the TAN tax resolution notice. Motion, Mr. Blackwell. Second. Second, Ms. Shackford. This is just for the formal minutes. This is a motion authorizing the issuance of a tax anticipation notice not to exceed 15 million. Uh, first reading. This is Mr. Blackwell made the motion and Ms. Shackford seconded it. Any discussion? All in favor? Dr. Nix and Mr. Surratt. I'm in favor. All right, that, that is you now. Yeah, we, we got you, Dr. Nix. I, I guess we lost Mr. Surratt. All right, that is, we did not have Mr. Surratt, but we did have Dr. Nix, that is you now. Safe travel, like. Hey, y'all. Have a good evening. You too. Next item on the agenda: the 22-23 general fund budget first reading. Dr. Um, as Miss Morgan is getting prepared, I just want to remind everybody of the things that have happened across the state that impacts our budget situation. Um, first, you got the mandated teacher raises, mandated bus driver raises. 18.1% PIBA increase, the highest that I've ever seen. Uh, the retirement increase, the new state funding model that is 75-25, uh, um, where the state is expecting the local to contribute 25% of the, the uh, funding, which hasn't been happening um, across the state for a while. And some districts do, some don't. Uh, it's really impacting a lot of the rural districts. Uh, also, you know, we've talked before, we've had that long spell where we went with no increase in millage. Uh, SRO raises across the city and the county impacted. And then just like Mr. Gallagher talked about and you all brought up the fee, everybody that, that uh, we come in contact with, as I'm sure everyone here does in their own homes, um, you're seeing inflation cost on everything. Everything is going up in price. Um, so that impacts us as well, all of the programs and different things that we do. We've already gotten letters from numerous different uh, vendors and people that we deal with on a regular basis that have either, like the county, uh, charged the fee or their increase in prices of things. So I uh, just wanted to kind of run down the list of things that have impacted the budget this year. So, Ms. Morgan, if you're all set. Okay. Uh, you should have a copy of the latest packet. And I apologize for changing a little bit of numbers, but we had some positive changes yesterday as a result of a couple of positions going to new funding sources. So I wanted to get those numbers out. And also, uh, I had been asked for an analysis of the athletic supplements and found a couple of duplications in that that we'll go through as we get to that part. So it's positive information, so you have the latest numbers literally as of last night. Uh, as I indicated in the cover letter, you have the latest information based off the revenue from all the reports received from the state. I updated this as of last Wednesday. They sent out the bus driver allocations as late as last Wednesday afternoon. Uh, bus driver increases were 5%. We have passed that through. Even though the state's scale for bus drivers starts at eight, it went from eight forty-four to nine dollars and twelve cent. We are well above that, but I am required by the state department that if they put an amount on there and it was sixty-eight cents, I have to pass that sixty-eight cents along. So our bus driver base salary increased to thirteen sixty-eight. Uh, we also had the mandate for the teacher scale. Uh, we've wondered 
for months, whether what it was going to be, was it 4,000 plus local, 2,000 plus local, one or the other, without the local, and it ended up being that the scale, the base scale was adjusted to 40,000, and we do not have to maintain the local, so you have a copy of that teacher scale in your handout, your packet, taking us to the 40,000 minimum. I maintain the percentages between every step of every section of that scale the same percentage as the previous years. What was um, starting last year? Do you have that? I do. It was 38. It was 38. Um, 38,376. 38,376. So about $1,700. No, it's about four and a half, four point two percent increase to make that to the 40. 4.2. You take 38,376 to 40, I believe it's 4.2. And you, um, you said you maintained that all the way up, and then I saw in the packet on some of these other districts, that's what I was telling Dr. Fall before the meeting, some of the other districts look better on the starting end because they went up some, but if you follow, they must not have maintained it all the way through because if you look down their scale, we catch up to them. We do in places, but I took the scale from the previous year's here, right. calculated the percentage between each step, and it varies every single year. Because mm -hmm. I think the doctorate last number of our scale from the prior year to this year is only like 700 something dollars. So that, and, and if you look at the state scale, and I'd be glad to send you that, I calculated their percentages and they're just as off as we were. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. do not like put 2% every, every year or 1% in no, matters. No, my point was I think some of them took their start and teacher scale up, but they didn't adjust everything else. They didn't trying. adjust it as much. And we did. Or right. About the yeah. look of this, you adjusted everybody. So if you're on year 14 as a bachelor plus 18, you also got a 4.8. Sure Other everybody, districts may not have it. Right. You could plug your numbers in. I looked at others and I just played me, you know, say, okay, I'm year 13, I've got a master's plus 30. And if you do that, every a lot of those other districts didn't plug it in. They either A, readjusted their whole scale, or they didn't give the same raise as the start teacher. It looks good on the front end. That's why we did those, all the different districts that we had, that we knew about to this point. Yeah, we want you gave to see the so And as you'll see as we go through here, with me telling you what, what I did to calculate the whole budget, we tried to give everybody something. Mm -hmm. And so we adjusted that accordingly so that we maintained that same percentage. Now, does that say that everybody gets 4%? No. Mm -hmm. But on an average, with some of the things you're looking at, around a full total 4%. Okay. So that base teacher salary, we meet the state mandate of starting salary of 40000 and yes, if you see all the comparisons, we are below all the surrounding districts. Okay, for the expenditures, uh, as I indicated, the largest increase is in salaries and benefits, but that's the greatest percentage of our budget. Based on the final pre legislature, we are required to do a 75-25 split, as I all indicated. We took the base salary up. We did not, and we will no longer maintain the local percentage. Our local percentage used to be 12.15% tacked on to the state scale. So we no longer have to maintain that, or we would be, your, my numbers would be greatly different to what you see. Uh, for the classified staff, we put a 2% increase on all of the classified scales, with the exception of the custodians, and that has been such hard positions to fill we took the custodian scale to the bus driver scale. Hopefully that will help with some recruitment. But all the, most all the other classified scales went up 2% and then they will get their staff. For the administrative scales and salary coordinator positions, we put a flat 4%. So basically with the 2% on the scales and their staff, it gave them around the 4%. So we're trying to be consistent district-wide. That also meets the mandate that the administrator of a building be the highest paid person in the building. Yeah, that's what we needed to do for that. Uh, in addition, your budgeted salaries and benefits has the athletic supplements in it, and 
That number changed from a 34% increase yesterday to a 19.6% increase when I found the three positions that were duplicated. And I have removed them from your latest numbers. That helped greatly. Uh, you do have a packet of the analysis that I was asked for yesterday, comparing what was submitted to me by athletics uh, for this year, and I went in and added last year. You can go line item by line item by each of the five schools with athletics and see where the changes are, whether the number of positions being paid a supplement increased, whether the supplement itself increased. And I highlighted the three that I removed from this listing because those three are part of the base salary of those coaches and they get spread over 24 payrolls, so they didn't need to be included in this. I know you probably haven't had time to really dive into this, but if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. So, Ms. Morgan, do you want us to ask questions during your presentation, or would you rather finish that up and then let's go back? Either so way, either way, sign out of mind. If you've got a question, I'll be glad to answer it. So, I guess to start on the athletic salary scale, how how did these coaches end up with supplements higher than last year? Like, who, was this a recommendation, or did Coach Scriven think that they... It's a recommendation by Coach Scriven. Okay. So this social media webmaster, we've never had that before. The Correct. $2,500. So that's a new person, or is that a style? new supplement? New supplement. These are in addition to their regular pay. So, but these haven't gone into effect yet? Uh, uh, not this year, year's not. Okay. Last year's have all been paid, have mostly all been paid out. They just submit them to us at the, at the end of the season of each sport. Because some coaches got pretty hefty increase and then others didn't get anything at all. I'm just wondering what the rationale was there. <clears throat> well, I mean, you have this one at $31,150 and then you know, like, you, I mean, you just pick one. This is zero for zero. That's Not everybody one. got one. That's one of the ones that was removed because it's duplicated. That's automatically in his pay. Yeah. So it should have been added to the supplemental list this year and it had not been on there last year. But it is a supplement that is paid. It's divided over 24 pages. Is this based on revenue that they bring in or no? No. Where did it come from, Dr. Paul? Do you know? Uh, when, he, when he looked at ours versus surrounding areas, that's where he came up with the amounts. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, I mean, it just seems. Yeah, he, uh, sort of and I think if, if I remember correctly, um, I think of the, the a lot of the big changes as far as the supplement was more on your non-revenue and your uh, middle school because we were given um, I think middle school was maybe a thousand dollars supplement or something like that and I think you bumped it to 15 if I remember correctly which one um, for middle school for the coordinator for the coaches it went from 15 to 2000 15 to 2 and it was something you will see, um, like I said, you can compare funded positions. There are a few, there was one or two that actually came out, like a cheer assistant at those schools have been taken out, but then there were some others that increased. It may have been... Um, actually, the one of the middle school, I'm looking at an eighth grade basketball head coach, it went up $300. We, we had a 1200 supplement on it, and we raised it 300 on that one. So the head football coach had nothing last year? No, he did. It was he did. That's what's misleading about the whole thing. It, 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 it is. It's like he has nothing here. here. And so his it is. Is it was not one. So, one. so just think of it like this, I guess, as I had to explain it myself. It was paid, this, this was paid last year. It just wasn't paid from athletic funds. So this time when we saw it the first time, the athletic fund is paid for, and now it's just going back to where it was paid last year. It's the same money that's being spent. It's just going from two different pots of money. 
this last year was the first year we ever had an athletic budget per se. So all this money would have been paid out of just general salaries. Well, this is paid out of general fund. All these athletic so well, must get general fund, and those three were. I know, but I'm just saying they, they wouldn't have hit on an athletic budget. Is what I'm saying. Last year. Would the uh, dance uh, component fall under the, uh, the athletic department? Because on the dance the component, uh, I actually just got an email today questioning that, and I told Dr. Powell I had received two phone calls questioning the dance program. It was not added to this when it was submitted to me during the budget process. So if we approve that, we will have to adjust. But we're talking about the dance. How much would they add? How much would that add to an estimate? I don't know. I wasn't giving any numbers. I was just asked they were trying to order something today, and they did not find an account number to put it to because we were not. None of the athletic budget has dance listed. And that was under athletics instead of arts. Yes. Yes. Does golf? Now this is kind of in the weeds, but does golf have an assistant coach? I thought they did. The uh, high school? Uh, uh huh. It. No. Uh, it wasn't on last year's list, are they? They might have a voluntary assistant. Well, and I'll throw this out there. This is all of the supplements paid out of the general fund budget. There were some supplements paid out of Dickens money that I don't account for. So. Who keeps up with that? The school. The school. The school. They meet with them every year and they go through their list of requests and they determine. So you can review this and uh, let me know if you have any further questions or any kind of changes or whatever. But that what is playoff bonus under wrestling. Uh, he put that at the bottom. There because just wasn't a line separating it. That's all of the sports, not just wrestling. Oh, okay. I know it and looks that way. There just isn't a line separating it. must have been doing it this and, year. and I called him today about that because someone else asked me about that. Okay. And the reason that that went up is because the amount that was budgeted previously didn't cover the number of playoff rounds that we made last year. Wow. Right. So that's why he increased. Because okay. it's a guess of who's going to make the playoffs on okay. the you know I, mean? I understand it. It just looked like it was under wrestling. Yeah, I know, I know. But I, I, there just okay. wasn't a line there. Okay. He, he didn't put a line. That's all the sports, though. And they get, um, I believe the assistants get um, 250 a week, and the head gets 500 a week for every additional week that they make it in the playoffs. So if they go deep, they get for each week. I understand that. Any more questions related to that? Uh, other increases in expenses, as Dr. Fowle mentioned, there was an 18.1% increase in our FEBA insurance expense that the district pays. Uh, that starts in January, so your members have that in for six months of next fiscal year. And a 1% increase in South Carolina retirement. We also included, well, we also eliminated 17 positions and added 10 new positions that I have indicated to you. Those are detailed out on the bottom of page 7 of your handout. Do you have any questions related to those? What are the lab managers for um, Gaffney High and Blackstone High? What kind of labs? Credit recovery. Okay. Is that the ingenuity? Yes. And those are in the top portion that has not been included in the budget. The bottom portion is the 10 that were included in the numbers. So is this like a paraprofessional yes. position? Yes. The lab manager is still Yes. Back. Yes. At 26000 that's as soon as they have, that's kind of middle of the scale as soon as they have some type of excuse. Yeah, whatever but they don't have to be in. certified. Right. They're a 
Other notices, as Dr. Powell indicated, I have received notices from all of our utility companies, AT&T Telephone, Bitbox Document Storage, Pitney Bowes increased our leases on the postage machine. You know the postage rates have increased. Uh, travel reimbursement mileage increased by the IRS. Everything pretty much has increased. So you will see that kind of flow through the numbers. Uh, SRO expense did increase because the city and the county gave raises and we are also contracted to pay them overtime if they work overtime for us. But they also have one um, traffic control officer in there too. Also included is the actual details of the athletic budget. That's page 13 of your handout. Because one of the lines in the General fund budget now is an audit requirement that I offset this deficit of an athletic budget deficit in my general fund. So that is a line item. I want you to have to back up for that one. That details the athletic budget Coach Driven gave me for each of the five schools. Now, does each board also have their own budget within this? No. This rolls everything up because. If we had to build each sport in our computer system, our general ledger system, that would be hundreds of general ledger accounts or times five. Last year, um, when we went through this, the, he broke it out by sport initially, but then we couldn't do it that way, so it went in this way. But um, what I plan, whenever we have a new AD come on, they'll break up that amount again into the sports. They can advocate yeah, internally, their bookkeeper keeps spreadsheets of the expenses but it won't the it won't change the overall amount but it will be as we vote each each um, department will have their own set budget right? yes it's still yeah. Yeah. and once I complete the presentation you will need to review and approve the sports budget separate because that's actually loaded into a separate fund than the general fund, just the offsets in the general fund. Uh, also included, of course, is the listing on the top of page 7 of 10 additional positions that are being requested, and those are not included in the numbers. You do see it added to the bottom line to see the effect of that. If you have any questions about those, we'll be glad to entertain those. Just as a matter of information, as of today, HR and my payroll people have completed 134 personnel changes in our system in three days. That's unprecedented. Uh, that's everybody, new hires, terminations, changes in pay, changes in funding source, everything that needed to go through. They knocked out 134 of those in three days. Just thought y'all might like to know that. And uh, as I indicated, those positions are not included. You see the net effect to the bottom. We're looking at right now with everything as it's presented. Before those positions, there is a deficit of $1.8 million. Adding those positions gives you a deficit of almost 2.6. If you have any line item, and I do not mind going line item by line item if you'd like, I can tell you what those line items pay for for our district. What do you mean with it? What I can For instance, uh, I can, you know, auditing fees, obviously auditing fees okay. increased. I can tell you yeah. why, because the audit itself, the time that audit has increased, and all of the requirements related to the CARES COVID Easter funding uh, has increased the time required, and they also have rate increase. So, our audit costs more than it's ever cost. That's, we also had inflation uh, implemented for repairs and maintenance. That's a standard. I usually add a 2 to 3 percent inflation rate on there. Our SCSBIT rates for our property insurance increased. That's for all the properties that we have now on the books that's insured. They had a rate increase. The good news is our student athletic insurance guy did not raise my rates at all. He didn't buy a cent. We so. found a lot more increases than decreases. Yeah. 
as you all find when you go shopping and stuff. Right. I had two, contracted services and dual enrollment, because both of those like were yeah. grouped. So contracted services is a number that pays for our sharp printer contract. Mm -hmm. It pays for picky bows machines, as I indicated. It pays that bit box document storage fee. It pays for apathy. Apathy, I think I said that right. Our new website vendor is where that was paid. It pays for my machines that are check sealers and printers and everything that we use for that. And we also paid for property appraisals last year for that number. And there is possibility of some numbers in there for the LA program. So now, so why did it go from uh, 188000 to 708000 Well, we what budgeted this year the 708000 because contracted amounts have increased. We're doing more services on our contract basis. That was in 2021. The actual came in at 188. Okay. Uh, this year, I have bumped it up slightly to cover additional expenses. And most of our contracts, if they are a three to five year contract, there is an inflation factor built into each of the years as they go. That's like faces as well. Our faces contract, you know, our form teachers, mm -hmm. it's, that's everything. Okay. It's all increased on us. Okay. Yeah, faces, fees went up, that's, that's it. Professional said, most, services, it went up. Most everything has oh. increased. And then exactly. some of the other line item changes if, if, if you have specific questions. What about the dual enrollment? Yeah, that's a good question. The dual enrollment is is driven by the volume of students right. that are in those programs and we pay the tuition and the book fees to Limestone <coughs> University and SEC for that volume of students. So that's the estimates that we're given for the SMA students going in that program next year. We pay them twice a year for each semester. So you had how many this, this past year? Versus how many of them? Well, for some year? reason I'm thinking there was, was there 50 something at the uh, Scholars Academy? Right. We had 50 students. And it's going up to 70 plus next year. Okay. A little over 50. Um, I believe for our early college program, um, we had a general 42 and a half program, and that will increase next year as well. But some of that is also for our dual enrollment children um, <coughs> who are not in one of those programs. Currently, right now, you know, there's a lot of free courses at the SEC if they take you know, mm -hmm. two or more courses, but um, we still have fees that are associated with some of that as well. So you see a big influx of students getting into these programs for next year? Um, we are definitely increasing <coughs> in our early college, and we are right at the 50 range for our um, scholars. The bottom number that other technical position. Just one more on the dual enrollment. That also includes our kids that take dual enrollment on our campus and stuff too. They don't have to be in one of those two programs. Right. That's what I'm saying. And so it, you, you're just seeing a lot of more children that's taking advantage of that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. And so, but the only fees that would be associated with that here, though, would be books, right? I mean, that we would pay as far as on our campus or Spark Protect. I mean, because Spark Protect, like you say, you gotta take two. You gotta, yeah, yeah, you gotta right. take two. two and three, but one, what is still pretty minimal, isn't it? I think, I don't, I don't know a lot, but I want to think it's like $65. Yeah, I don't think, but, but I think the, the main fee would be books, right? Is that what we're paying for? If, the, if it's on here. Yeah. If there's more kids going, we're paying for books. Okay. The next line under that, that other technical technical and professional is due to the increases of the SROs. That's where that's paid from. And we are adding another one at Gaffney High School this year, so I added one additional. Are we adding another or are we just replacing one that didn't get filled? So we're not well, yeah. sure what, what, the, what the plan is, is we have not, we have not had any security folks over there all year home. We only spent 40000 on security last year because they were never there. The company got bought out by someone else. We looked around for another security, couldn't find one. I think it's safer to have a gun in there than a non-gun. So we talked to the city about possibly adding a third one. I told Mr. Taylor I'd call him after tonight and let him know for certain, and they're on board with us. What about that parking lot attendant? That parking lot attendant is in payroll. 
It's an added position, so that's in our salaries and benefits number. If they will be an employee. The parking lot office. is the same. Where what, the whole goal is to offset the security, the officer, and the parking lot with mm -hmm. that security money we were already paying. That's the whole goal of it. The, the parking Would that be lot. Would an armed person as well? The parking lot, no. Oh, okay. um, nothing. <laughs> oh, sorry. But they they will be. We had a lot of issues in the parking lot the past oh, okay. year or two, okay. and they will be in charge of constantly running, making sure kids aren't hanging in the cars, right. doing things they shouldn't be doing, and getting into the school. They'll also help with the traffic on a regular basis. You know, in the mornings and in the evenings. So they have like a little golf cart or something mm -hmm. they ride around mm -hmm. on. And yeah. Okay. So they're at expense to the golf cart. You already have one for them. We already got one over there. Okay. So, he did. He did everything. They ain't have to worry about the conditions. So did that do away completely with the contract services, like the people in the lobby? Yeah, because we couldn't even get them. So the school resource officer is going to let you in the lobby now. Well, there, there will be either be a school resource officer to buzz you in at the door there, or another employee will cover that, depending on however Eric wants to set it up. But it gives us three guns in the school instead of two. No, I agree with you, but I wouldn't waste one sitting in the desk pushing the button on that. Well, they, they, they ain't going to sit there all day. That's what I'm saying. It could be a, a, a parapro or a office personnel or whoever they set up over there. It won't be an officer sitting there 24 7. So that's three SROs at Gaffney High. Do we have SROs at all the other schools as well? Yes. Yes, we're budgeted. Every state is, is covered. Yes. Okay. And a traffic control officer in Clarksburg. Uh, As you look through the list, do you have any other questions about any of the numbers at all? Are you on page six this morning? I am. The other objects, that's just a very general. That is, and that's where your Board of Ed contingency money sits for Ms. Mons to pay for your travel and your conferences and these meetings and anything else expense rise that is generated for you. That I number used to include zonar for transportation, and that's why it went from six hundred thousand way down, we discontinued zonar. So I my question is how did it go from six hundred forty eight thousand eight hundred twenty eight dollars to forty two thousand? We discontinued the zonar. Zonar zone was a transportation thing. Uh -huh. They got put in there, I don't know how long ago, because zonar's old, I don't know. Yeah. It's been a while, but. Um, so we're paying $606,000 for it. Well, no, not everything was 600000 but that was a lot of that number, significant yeah, amount. It was, it was that's like a routing system. It was a big yeah. one. What was the number? It was a big amount. Huh? What was the number? That's still. I don't know the exact number, um, but she'd have to look line item by line item and, and see what the, the zonar was a route, an old routing system that they used to use here, and the state now has uh, was traverse traversa traversa, and the, and the state actually covers that now. So we switched to traversa before the state took it over, but the state actually covers it now, so we don't even have to cover it. Yeah, that's, that's on the good news side. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are transfers? We do transfers every year. There is 500000 that is allocated to offset deficit and food service fund. Mm -hmm. And there is 92000 that is transferred to assist with um, adult ed. Those are basically the same numbers since I came here. And you'll see that reflected in your audit every year also. Payments to the other district is for children that are our county's children that are being taken care of by other districts for whatever reason that are Transits. Okay. Some years it comes in higher than others. Uh, I've seen that number elevate each year. I mean, go up and down each year, so it's pretty well consistent budget to the third of that. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I know our bus drivers received an increase, and you said the custodians went onto the scale with the bus drivers, so they received an increase. What about your cafeteria staff? Uh, cafeteria staff, we elevated them just right at over 2% to the level that I, I think they went from 10 something to $11 in the numbers that you have. Okay. 
And what about um, substitute teachers? We have not made any changes to the policies on the records of substitute teachers. So substitute teachers are still making what? $10 an hour unless they're long term sub. Cafeteria operators in this round went from 10 61 an hour to 11. We ran. Well, I thought we goal. had spoke. I thought at one of our meetings before we had spoken about giving uh, an increase to we did um, substitute teachers. Matter of fact, I, I, I know we did. Our goal was to raise all of our hourly employees. Mm -hmm. We just we don't have funds. We ran probably ten this different is, versions. Or this more. is version nine. Um, so we tried to do as much as we could where we could give everybody something. We tried but we to, but we're not giving it away something. You're not giving it to teachers. Not the subs. I'm talking about our full time employees. That we have. And okay. I know we have some subs that sub on a regular basis for us, but. Um, so there's nothing that we can squeeze somewhere else to give ourselves. Yeah, if you guys want to add, I mean, we can add to it, but that's 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 going to add to the to the budget. And we were fortunate enough this past year when we had the permanent subs in the building, they were filling in for COVID leaves, mm -hmm. and I was able to charge that to the COVID fund. Right. So they're not in, that's not in here. That, so that expense was not. Yeah, yeah, but what that's also saying is next year we're not going to have that luxury that's already, right. so it's going to come back out. That's exactly right. A lot of, for the past two years, we've been very fortunate. Even though we have been budgeted at a deficit, we've been budgeted at a deficit every year that I came here. Um, we have not had to get fund balance to offset our general fund over than a million and a half past adjustment that was noted last year because we were able to transfer so many expenses to the COVID money. But that will end. And, and that's not and a that year was because of the new rule with the athletes. That's where the new audit rule that they did not carry a negative. Oh. When was the last time subs got an increase? They have not seen an increase since I think ten dollars an hour since I And that was coming up on board. We did vote for the increase, correct? We did. So if we're voting on something and it doesn't happen and we're catching it now, like is there a way we can catch it before then? Because we when we voted on we assumed that it was in Done. play. I don't, I don't know, know of a vote happening on a sub pay. What did you vote for? Is it just increase it? Or, I don't it. think there was a vote. I, I know there was conversation about we wanted to try and raise everyone and get more competitive because of everything else. You can go push a button at a car wash and make $13 an hour. I mean, I know we had those conversations, but there was never a vote saying take subs from no. 10 to 13. Well, it's disgusting what we just did. The only thing you did was you took bus drivers from 12 to 13. Right, and that was the vote. Okay. And as Dr. Kyle indicated, we've run multiple versions of these numbers. We tried to adjust almost all scales based off the salary surveys, trying to get them cleaned up and level and more competitive and we did not have the dollars. You're looking at a $4 million loss if I tried to do that. So you said an increase to our subs will be an additional $4 million. Not just the subs. <laughs> <laughs> <When> <laughs> we were going to say always. But we took all of the scales trying to fix all the scales. So the increase to subs will be what? What What type of increase? To it the depend on what, how much you wanted to increase in and how many hours they work. It varies. You'll notice the substitute line because I, I've averaged out the past three years taking out the permanent subs, the actual substitute salary line is slightly lower projected next year. I dropped that $75,965 based off of a three year running average. What page are you on, Ms. Morgan? I'm on page five. At the top, mm -hmm. line four. Temporary yeah. salaries is substitutes. And I budget a number to each building based off the historical data. And I looked back three years and averaged it out, but removing the permanent subs that we put in extra money this time. And it actually was low. 
but you also have to account for with close four buildings too, so you have more of a staff. Than that. I just wish we could have done something for them. Okay. Any more questions related to any particular line item of the P&L? Where we are, where are we in uh, fund balance? What was our fund balance? Uh, it is roughly about 7.3 million uncommitted. Uh, the last audit we had was 18 plus million in there. You have approved projects for phase one athletics. We targeted possibly phase two athletics. Arts program. Um, Just the arts and the athletics. That was something else. I'll see if I brought that with me. What's the what's the status on those? Uh, wasn't it like five hundred thousand or something for arts? It was five hundred thousand for arts. Yes. What's the status on that? Any of that been done? We have bid out the instruments for the two high schools. It's at, It's actually out right now. And Mr. Hughes is working on the desk. I don't know if they've been purchased yet or not, but he was working on the desk for the art teachers and stuff that they requested. And the Blacksburg um, softball that didn't happen, what's the status on that? Um, before Coach Scriven left, they wanted to scratch the um, locker room and fix their dugouts. So he was in the process of trying to put together a bid when he left for the dugouts. That was decided by their coach or he Yes, was? he met with the coach and that's what they decided. They'd rather, instead of that money going to something they only go into to change and that's it, they'd rather have their dugouts fixed. And we already, they had a field issue. We already had that in the capital already okay. to fix their field issue. So in final, it says of the 630 out, it was 18.6 million. You approved 500,000 for arts, 1,252,300 for phase one ball fields. That has been extended and has not finished. Robotics was the other one, 8,000 robotics. Uh, there was an approved budget deficit for this year that hopefully we will not have to get, but the budget deficit for the flash for the current well the year we just finished on six thirty was a million one thirty six. Uh projects yet to be voted on for phase two was a, was estimated at a million three oh one seven and my requirement to keep eight point three three percent of this budget gets you seven point one to seven point two million, leaving you about seven point three unlimited. These are rough numbers but I try to keep up with it. So from the date of the audit, we were at 18 million, and now it's 7.3 million. If every bit of that is expended, if my audit comes in and I have to take something from fund balance as though it was budgeted, then yes, you could ultimately do that. I have to maintain 8.33%. So that's I think what's I'm, uncommitted. The, the that's 18, uncommitted. Yeah. You have the, the 11, 11 state required that already in there too. Yeah, that's the stuff. You can't. You can't I can't that. go below that, or I'll go on fiscal watch. Seven point three is what's uh, what's there. But now, with that being said, if you pass a budget that's two million dollars in the deficit and right. you, don't, you don't get lucky, uh, right. then that's a third of your money right there. So in three years, you're on that fun list. That's what I'm if you have to do it, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what happens. Um, so it's not like you can go out below any money because um, we don't have it. You don't have it. It sounds it, it sounds good, but it ain't. And hopefully, I, I think our audit will come out positive again because we did have cares money and some expenses and everything was done, and we tried to keep an eye on. Everything that we've had control of, pretty much, we have cut fund, cut spending. The problem is, is that everything we don't have control of, like all the state initiatives and things like that, it constantly went up every year. Where are the P cards shown in the budget? Uh, P Just cards are rolled up into the expenses because okay. they are it's imported every month from the bank uh, to these expense numbers. Unless it's a people activity expense or a title fund that's paying for it. So it's if included it, in here in the if it hits the general fund, fund expense, okay. yes. Now a lot of those expenses do go to other funds. Okay. 
So overall, you've got a projected revenue of 82.5 million based off the latest numbers from the county treasurer's office and the state numbers. And I indicated in there, uh, you see some roll up, the state did roll up this time. My funding is basically two lines. You get one line for EFA, one line for EIA, and they rolled up multiple funding sources into those lines. So that's why you see like a negative 9.4 million, but if you go down two lines, you'll see that that number increased by 10.3. So again, that's Projected revenue at 82.5 million, projected expenses right now is running 84.3. Ms. Martin, did you, I'm sorry, and I, I may have missed it. Did you explain what the athletic deficit offset was? Yes, that's fine. If you look at page uh, that I referenced, page 13, yes, which is the athletic budget. Yes, ma'am. You'll see that total for all five is projected to be a deficit of 375,300. Audit requirement now says I have to line item that and offset it to the general fund. So that's an expense. Okay. But really, that's not, a, that's not an additional expense. That's just putting it in a different spot again. We cannot run negative scan. No, I understand, yeah. but, I, but I'm saying that money was spent last year, the year before, the year before, but last year is the first year that they said you have to put it by okay. itself. Okay. So when you're showing that you're losing another X amount of dollars, you're not losing that X amount of dollars. You've already been paying that for years. You're just showing it now that you're losing it. You've been paying it in total, in total from a district perspective, but it was sitting in a pupil activity fund and they changed the regulations. Right, yeah. Them. But I'm saying it didn't go up, that's what I'm telling you, Ms. Dow. It didn't go up by 300 and something thousand dollars and it didn't even probably change at all. Um, it looks like, oh, we took a huge hit, but we didn't. Oh, I understood when she explained it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, because that was confusing to me. Like, well, we lost another X amount of dollars, but we didn't. It just got paid. Or show, it didn't even get paid differently. It just got shown that it got paid differently. Right, right. We just have to account for it differently. But even if you raise the budget to cover that, it's just going to be, it's going to show it again. For instance, that's the difference between what you bring in and what you, what you, so if, if you said, all right, next year, Let's, let's raise the budget to $980,000 so that we don't have this. It's just going to be even higher next year because you're... You're still only bringing in so much right, money you're only from bring, the sports. You're, so then it's going to show that you lost $600,000. Right. That's, so that's, that, that doesn't even... I understand why we're having to do it, but that doesn't even make sense. That, For years, that, they were allowed to keep negatives rolling, and they rolled forward every year, and that's why you had to hit last year in the audit of $1.5 million. I had to really clean that up. The next page is in your packet, of course. I have one more. Ms. Morgan, we okay. move on. I'm so sorry. You're fine. <laughs> I like to I like to ask questions so I understand. The instructional services that double. So what are we what are we adding to that? Okay. Or what are we doing differently? The instructional services line includes all of Miss Westmoreland's contracted services, PTO, TST, and psychologists. They had to increase and in contract those because we could not fill the positions. So the expense has been moved out of payroll and it's now in that line. So it's not in contracted services, even though it is contracted, it's in instructional It's in instructional services. because those are services rendered to the students directly. So okay. we consider that an instructional. Gotcha. And the basis expense for the foreign language teachers, the fees we have to pay that company is also rolled into that line. Okay. And that went up per teacher. Gotcha. Okay, continuing on page eight, I provided you another copy of the village rate increase limitation calculation. Uh, we had an unusual year this time based off the state revenue of Department of Fiscal Affairs, and the cap limit is the highest it's ever been with us, I guess, a CPI increase of 4.7%. So that allowed a village increase just for this year alone at 8.7. We are allowed to roll it for three years uh, before it drops off if we choose not to increase. And right now you can take the maximum millage up 12 meals. That's this year plus 
uh, last year's we did not use a uh, slight percentage of 2021's that is left. And you have my details where I keep up with that. Following that, of course, is what a meal increases and I gave you examples and worksheets from two meals all the way to the 12 to tell you how much revenue you would be generated if we do a millage increase. I can go ahead and tell you that my uh, business organization throughout the state, the one that the Skies Bay leaders from all business officials from the districts in the state, they sent out a survey two weeks ago. Those results came in yesterday. I shared them with Dr. File. 95% or better of the districts have raised their millage this time. And it averages about eight, uh, anywhere from eight to 8.6 to 10 meals. One or two was lower, but almost all of the districts have raised millage this time. That's just for information only, but everybody's feeling the pain. It's only part we understand are losing any millage right now. If we didn't yes, if you do not raise it, we will lose that 1.1 bill yep. from 2021. Yep. Dr. Nix or Mr. Surratt, do I have any questions for Ms. Morgan? I don't. Mr. Surratt, you have any questions for Ms. Morgan? Mm -hmm. And I talked to Dr. Paul at length about it yesterday, um, or maybe it was the day before, was the Elevate contract or the, the and I, I think that's important to understand because it's, it's a departure in the way that we're delivering instructional services in some classes. Um, so I think it's important that we understand why we're doing it um, and in what classes we're doing it, and just so that we're all on the same page because I know we'll receive calls from parents who aren't used to this type we've been doing it um, in special services for quite a while um, having contracted services some virtual some not but basically it is um, any position that we can't fill we have two options either we do something like this and have a virtual or we have a sub sit in there that has no certification this is a certified teacher that streams in live with the kids. The kids interact with her through the screen or him. Raise their hand, ask questions, all that, just like as if the body was in there. Um, the only place that we have it right now is the foreign language, middle school uh, foreign language that we talked last year that we couldn't fill them. And then um, the high school has some science positions that they've had no applicants for that um, they're looking at using for that. Um, it, it is not our ideal, obviously, always is to have a body in the classroom, a certified body. But if you don't have a certified body, this is the next best thing. And I, I, I would put my own child in, in with this before just letting them sit in with a non-certified Because it is an actual state certified teacher teaching with lessons, curriculum, all that. So from a budget standpoint, it's not really, um, because I, I know people are going to think it's a cost savings measure, but by the time you add uh, a parapro and then you pay for the program itself, it's going to cost you what a teacher costs you anyway, right? It, it's pretty close. Um, you, you're, going to have, you're going to put someone in that class regardless. And it's a, already a budgeted position, that teacher just isn't there. So either you have a certified person streaming in, or you have a non-certified. I, I felt like the certified was the best option for our kids. So we're going to leave those jobs posted. Yeah, yeah. Our goal is, like I said, our goal is to keep a body, a certified body in the classrooms. This is not a forever thing. Now, so the way that the teacher shortage is going, who knows? I mean, I'm sure it's going to fluctuate. It might be science this year. It might be math next year. It might be something. But the goal is, is to have as many classes as we can make sure that when we have our kids in there, they're with a certified teacher. 
So in December, somebody graduates, we're going to take them, and that, that, that'll be the end. Yes, yes, okay. most definitely. I hope so. Most definitely. We're not locked in for any kind of minimum or anything. No, we're, we're, it is it is very flexible. Matter of fact, um, Mr. Molnax was going to use them for a uh, Spanish position position over there, but the, they actually got someone that signed um, just I think today or yesterday. Um, so that we, we're not doing that. Now. It is very flexible, and, and, and even the other benefit to it too is also, and, and I use Ms. Schenker as an example, if she's teaching math and goes out on maternity leave, I can get a certified teacher to cover that time now that she's out and come in and pick right up where she left off. It's streaming. It's not, when we think virtual, we think of our ingenuity and our recordings that the kids log on and watch. It's not that. It is just like, as many of us had to experience through COVID, virtual book meetings and things. It's like that. You're, you're interacting and talking live to that person. They're, the kids are raising their hand, asking the question, the teacher's responding. So it's much more beneficial than the non-certified, if that helps. Do you sign a contract or not for a certain period of time? Or? The only thing that we really sign is an amount. Like, we, um, we agreed, you, you have to agree up to a certain amount. If we go above a certain amount, mm -hmm. then our rate changes. So let's say that we said, well, it looks like maybe we're going to need six teachers. Okay. And we end up needing eight, then they may do a new, whole new contract with whatever that rate is at that time. And that teacher is only teaching the children in our classroom, or are there other kids elsewhere in, in our teaching classroom. as well? Okay. In our classroom, yep. But if you sign for six, and like you say, you fill a position, you're down to five now. Yeah. But you still have to pay for that. No, stage. we only pay for what we use. We only pay for what we use. If you go above. That rate doesn't the change then either? No, only if we go above, then then we would have to, and, and that's only if their rate changes. If their rate's the same, we just do a new contract for eight versus six. That's the only time that it could change. As long as we stay within that, that, that guaranteed amount, we're good. And, and that's our goal, like I said, our goal is to have a body in there, so hopefully come Christmas we get some more teachers, but I just read an article that every teaching program is down like 41% of people going into it. And colleges are finding kids coming in their freshman year, only 4 point, I think it was 4.8% or something like that is going into education. That's not good. And then we know the, the mass exodus that we've had recently across the, the profession. I mean, it's, it, like I said, the goal is to have a body, but in my opinion, this is the next best thing. How do the students submit assignments and take tests, things like that? Is that, um, is that all done electronically on their laptop? Or? The majority of it will probably be done electronically, right there on their device, because we're one to one. Okay. But, because we have the Parapro in there too, they could do a paper, like if someone's got an accommodation or whatever, they, they can still get that accommodation. They can still do a paper. But the mass majority is gonna be digital. Okay. So you will have the children in the classroom and then you will have a Parapro there just to kind of monitor right. And, right. and proctor, okay. Yep.
uh, we need a motion to approve the general fund budget first reading. Keep in mind, we can also, if it's something you want to go and take a line item out, we can approve minus a line item, we can approve a certain amount, we can approve it as presented, but due to the timeline that we're on this late in the game and due to hopefully, I guess, getting this thing done before school starts and helping with payroll, I think we need to try to do our best, even if we're not extremely excited about this one, we have a second reading and also we can talk about millage increase after. I think it'd be good to try to pass some form of a first reading tonight. I follow I got a question here. Yes. Sir. Back in athletic here. I'm just looking at like in the middle schools. I mean, uh, we're showing just saying middle school football player. We're showing like uh, Ewing has a head coach and uh, uh, assistant head coach and two assistants. There's four people total in the total. Like a game in the middle. They have a head coach and an assistant head coach and six assistants. That's eight people who run that. I mean, why is it taking so many more? Um, twice the size is my guess. I thought they have a seven nine eight thirteen, right? What's that? Yeah. You know, didn't they have a seven nine eight thirteen? Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah. yeah. Versus you and just have one. Yeah. They had oh they had two. A two seven two. Eight okay. Eight. Eight. okay. All right. That's what I'm trying to do. I wouldn't catch you.
Right, all except Alma? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 except that, because we got rid of Alma. Okay. I'm sorry. What's the dollar amount for the four percent on administrative and coordinator? The salary increase. It is. And if it was the max 12 mil share, what was that impact? 6.4% increase. Is six, 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 seven. 12 mils gets you an average 6.47% increase on the assessed value of your car or rental properties, boats. I think they call that motorcraft now on the report. I did. Watercraft. So if you got a forty thousand dollar car, you're gonna pay twenty eight dollars and eighty cent more a year. You can divide that by twelve and see that's less than a half a million. Might not cover half a million no more. No, half a million dollars. Doctor, all these uh, amounts that on the athletic budget that shows amounts of revenue. Mm -hmm. These amounts is that all sports? Added together. Ticket sales, yeah. I would have thought it'd been more than that, like a big dead guy or something. Just a foot tall. Good sale. That's the estimate of gate revenue for ticket sales based off historical data that uh, Coach Griffin pulled. This does not include any kind of fundraising revenue because fundraising revenue is usually for a specific expense, too, and we didn't know what that was. But that is your ticket sale revenue gate revenue for all I sports. I just go by football. If you got five games and half a stadium, I don't know how I'm counting to set that to seven dollar ticket price, and then you go over a couple hundred pounds off there. That is what we have. That's what's been collected over the years. Increase that I brought last year's athletic budget that we just see. Well, you know, the people that have buy booster tickets, the booster, you know, has those season passes and stuff. They don't include tickets, though, do they? Mm -hmm. Do they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get that one. Good, good. I guess I'm going to have to do more. Or expect the one minute to study you in the shop. Yeah, I'm not doing my part. 
<laughs> Any other questions for anybody? If this uh, first reading was to pass, Dr. Paul, we have to wait 15 days to get a second reading, is that right? Yes, sir. We have to advertise it in the paper and send it, um, which we'll send it to Scott there and they'll get it posted right away. <laughs> but we can't, we can't send it to him without the first reading and the village part of his mom. Because they have to have that calculation in there too. And you do have the option of passing the first reading and telling me any changes you want for the second reading. How, how does how does how do we go about doing that, Mr. Morgan? Like as far as uh, I want to, I mean, I think our goal is always to try to pass a reading, a real reading of a budget where you're as close to the real one as possible, because that's the reason you do two readings and taxpayers have to say so. Um, how do you go about what what's the correct besides just saying, hey, bring us one back two million dollars? <laughs> I mean, what's the What's the way to go about doing that the right way that we could that we could get this thing? The right way would probably be to tell me out of everything that I've explained and what is included, what you would like either changed or taken out. And I will use simplify sports. If you want the seven hundred plus lower down, you tell me where you want it lower to. If you want the seven hundred and fifty, which minus there's three take it back down to last year. Or you want to get a line out of the line out and tell me what to take out and recalculate. I can do that. If you want to pick any other line item in the budget that has been included and you want it changed, I can recalculate it. It would be difficult for you to say take out too many dollars. There's a guy that yeah. where you want to come from. <laughs> We have, we have scrutinized this. You can ask Dr. Fowle, he and I sat for two days going through the payroll, over 7,000 line items of every employee that's paid out of this in there, or 1,000 employees paid out of general fund, and two to 300 paid out of other funds. And we went through 7,000 line items scanning to see if anything looked out of line over two days. What is the total um, cost of these athletic supplements, the new ones that were added in? Just the total. I'm sure it's on here somewhere. I well, there was a $150,000 barracks. If you look at the barracks column, yep. you know, there. But you need to take out those three that I removed. And that was, what, 30? Um, Let's see. About yeah, fifty six thousand and, and their and their benefits. So say roughly, I give you eighty thousand. There, there is not a whole lot. Um, it, it's really, I mean, it's going to be negative unless you start taking away bodies, because the two percent, the administrator, all that raise stuff and step is what about half a million. Give yeah, between the two percent on classified to the scales and the administrator, you're probably looking at around a half a million dollar hit total. And then add the positions, seven hundred eighty, whatever. I mean, you're barely a mil you know. So there, you still have because of the other raises that the state mandated. You're still it's still going to be a million plus. So what you're saying there with this budget is really no flux in the budget? That's correct. Uh, we have scrutinized it. We have run numerous uh, versions. We sat, like Miss Morgan said, for two days. We went line on by line on trying to find where we could make some cuts. Like I said, I mean, if, if we gave no one anything other than the state mandate, that's only about a half a million. And then if we don't do any of these positions, that's 700 and something, so you're a little over a million there. Other than that, there isn't much, I mean, unless you just want to start taking people off.
tell you, all these athletic stipends that we've added in, I wasn't expecting. I didn't know that was coming until we got there. I know you guys done it. We had not discussed them. That's 150,000 of it. Yeah. And, and you can you, you can say keep them at what they were and we move forward and you know like I said I mean it's there's not a lot out there that, that can be cut out but there you know you could you could do that if you wanted I mean in the grand scheme of things I guess it's not a whole lot of money that's what I in my mind 150 on this budget it just I want to make sure or, I mean I'm just one person obviously but it needs to be fair across the board. And it, it seems like that some folks got raises and others didn't, and I just don't know the rationale in it. I, I think it was because when he looked at surrounding areas and what their supplement, he tried to make them more in line with surrounding areas. So some might have been in line and some weren't. And I know um, for a long time, the non-revenue and the middle schools were always behind us. This morning, the classified staff, they get a 2% raise, is that correct? 2% on the scale and then their staff. That's why if they, get a staff. if they get a staff. If they get a staff. Well, right. if, yeah, if you give, but give them a staff. No, I'm saying if, they, if they're stepped out or maxed out, they still get a 2% raise. They still raise. get a 2% on the They just get 2% on now, is that correct? Yes, and that varies from a few cents. But, uh, uh, but then we're going on down to these others, they're, they're getting well, 5% of the bus, I guess a bus driver. That's state mandate. Yeah, that's state mandate. The so bus drivers are I'm just, actually trying to be, I'm just saying, just trying to be fair. They're actually getting eight because the state, they're also doing a three from the state. They're considered state employees, which we all technically are, but they are, are in the group of state employees. So they get a 5% and then a 3 and a 68 cents. So I adjusted their scale, each step of their scale, by 68 cents. Well, how about administrative and coordinator salaries? 4%. They were 4% for anybody that had not had any change. You know, like if they were reassigned to another school or promoted already and a salary quoted, that's their salary. Everybody else, I put a 4% on. Everybody else getting a 4%. That's what I'm saying. A gallon of milk, when they go to the store, it costs everybody the same thing. I don't care if you classify it or administrative skills. You see what I'm saying? I want to try to make this as fair as possible. And that's why we did that, because when you put the 2% on there and you step them, that actually averages out to close to 4%. The teacher scale went up in most places around 4%. I'm, I'm, I'm talking 2% of $20,000 is a whole lot less than 4% of fifty thousand dollars. You see what I'm saying? I'm saying that gallon of milk costs the same thing. It doesn't it doesn't go in percentages. And that's what I'm getting at. I, you know John Doe down here working in school mopping floors. Hey, I mean he sure he gets two percent of the raise. That's that's gonna be a drop in the bucket compared to some of these others. You see what I'm saying? That's By doing it this way. And that's that's I don't that's what I don't I want to try to be as fair to everybody. What would you recommend there, Mr. Blackwell? I, 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 mean, I, I don't know. When you use it percentages like that, I'm saying, it's, it comes out that way. I don't know. I mean, I've been here several years, uh, you know, and we've, we've talked about this before. And, uh, it just it just doesn't seem fair. I mean, that, that salary skills get wider and wider apart from them. And it's like taxes, though. The more you make, the more tax you pay. And it's, you know, it's, if we don't do a percentage, then you're going to be all over the place when you start looking at how many years people have and things like that. that like, like, let's say you just do a flat 2,000, well, 2,000 is going to make more of a difference on one person than another. So then it's, that's not fair. It's, uh, it's difficult. That's why I asked what, what you recommend because it's difficult to try and come up with something. That's why the, the rationale was if everything is close to that 4%, that's why we tried to do it that way. 
And plus, the other issue that we have with administrators is that our teacher pay scales creeped up so high that we got administrators that would have made less than their employees. And we can't have that. So that's another issue with it. And I, I don't disagree. I know that 2 and 4% is different amounts for different folks. I just say as a classified employee, they look around, everybody around them just got a bigger, uh, a lot bigger slice of the pie. So I'm talking about it doesn't matter from teachers and bus drivers to, to uh, administrators, all of them. You see what I'm saying? That just don't seem fair. What was the increase uh, for classified employees to give them 50%? Do we have that number? I don't have an exact number, but it is probably between two and three hundred thousand dollars total. To give them 2%. Yeah, yeah, just give them 2% of the state. And that's so what they have. So it would be 400000 roughly to give them 4%. Oh, yeah. How much did you say that was? The two percent. I would estimate the two percent on all classified scales and the sale to be yep. somewhere around a quarter of a million dollars, maybe a little bit more. Right. I mean, I hear what you're saying, Dr. Paul, in that it, it's this is not a budget you can look at and say, oh, well, there's a million dollars here we can cut, or there's two hundred fifty a year. I get that. And the tough part of it is to make any meaningful difference in this budget, we have to cut bodies, you're saying. Right? If you wanted to try and get it down to a balance, yes. But this is the question, though. How do you, it doesn't seem like, in my mind, and you tell me, that we have classes with 12, 14, 16 people in them. I mean, I still, oh, there doesn't seem to be any excess teachers or staff in these buildings. I just don't see it. Am I wrong? I mean, are there places to cut? There are places that we could find. Um, it, it, it's, it would have to take a shift in, in things that we do. In other words, like um, a lot of our specialized AP courses and things like that don't always have a large number of kids in it. So if you make that maybe in one centralized place and they go there, then you cut that down. You know, there's but then you're not going to offer it somewhere else. They have to go somewhere for it. You know, those kind of things you can definitely do. And there are, you know, over in some of the buildings, there are some classes that have small numbers. There are. I mean, it's not a ton. I'm not saying we got, you know, 50 to 100 positions sitting out there that we could eliminate. I'm not saying that. But there are some adjustments we could make if we had, you know. But you're talking about people that already have contracts. Yeah. And I don't mean to insinuate that we would do anything like that this year, but, um, you know, this, I don't know what you do with that. It's, it is very difficult, and that's, that's what I said. I mean, I mean, everybody's got a contract. I mean, what can you do? It's too late. We, we would love, it's too late. We would love to, to have a balanced budget, don't get me wrong. But if we would have tried to balance it, we would have to do things like that. And then, like I said, no one else would have got it. No one would have got any, no, none uh, other than the teachers and the bus drivers that were mandated. Because we just, the money isn't there. Our revenue does not equal up to it. Ms. Moore, can you tell more can find the information? Uh, I don't remember a lot here with the Scholars Academy information. The Scholars Academy? Yes. Scholars Academy? Yes. Yeah, Scholars. Scholars Academy is rolled in the general fund and total. Uh, that dual enrollment number has part of their fees and book number, mm -hmm. and then their staff enrolled in the general fund. And then there is a lease for Limestone that's a uh, line item, at, and it was actually negotiated about the road this year down and cut in half to 37500 Where it says rentals and leases, that's Scholars County lease. There isn't one page that's the Scholars County program in total. It's, it's merged in general. 
Can you give an estimate in total? I guess um, roughly there's four teachers there. Can we service in about 50? No, four teachers is probably going to run you about 80, 75 each with benefits because of the massive increase in benefits. There's four teachers, that's 350 plus 350 plus the, uh, the both servicing approximately 50 children. I said a half a million. It's close to a half a million. I said that two years ago, and they said that that was way in and I was wrong, but that's what it cost half a million dollars. For 50 kids? Okay. Now, I've said it then that I'm still for the program, but there was a way to bring it back to Gaffney High School and service those kids at Gaffney High School and use those teachers to teach other classes and didn't have to just focus on 50 kids and cut the lease out of my own do all that. We talked about that in depth, and it still is. That's an option. I still think it's an option. Unfortunately, here we are in July again, like the chef was saying, and it's too late. You've got kids who have already signed up. You've got parents that have already been promised things, and all that should have been done in March. Yeah. And, and with you saying that those children can be still serviced with those programs at the high school, correct? To a degree, yes. Part of the purpose of that program is to get them off the campus, their high school campus as well, so they experience that college setting. That's part of the purpose of being on have, a campus. I think you'd have double the number of attendees if they stayed on the campus because, in my opinion, a lot of the kids who come off quit this program want to go back to school to their main school, which is what we talked about when it started. But, that's neither here nor there. I mean, you can't, once again, yeah, you can make a change and say, cut it. But once again, you've already promised these kids. That, I mean, you've already told the parents. You, I mean, you can't. It's too late. It's like you, you, you get a budget. You get all this stuff. Too late to make any changes. So then you say, well, we'll change it next year. And next year you sit here in August. And it's too late. Because <laughs> for the last three years, I know that the state has been later on passing their budget, so what if we've been sitting here late? I, I just personally feel with the concerns of the pay increases for the staff, we have people that are making less than, what, $10 an hour and haven't received a pay increase in four years. That's unheard of for me. Which position was that you? That's the sub was one. Well, that's, that's still so part of it. They haven't, but all the other positions have received increases every year. And the one Billy is referencing that's just receiving the 2%? That's increase. all classified. He's talking about all classified. All classified. Your custodians, your bookkeepers, your paraphrase. Right, right. Non-certified. And you staff. estimated again to give them at least a 4% across the board would be? An additional $250,000. Okay. Roughly $250,000. Okay. No. She'd have to run it because your benefits and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you put the two percent that we adjusted the scale itself, right. and you step them down, you're coming out on an average of close to four percent. Not always, so I will make that clear. Because if not, my phone will roll, roll up tomorrow with people thinking they're going to get a four percent rate. Right. Because each step varies. I we, we tried to make sure that everybody got something because we need to be competitive, we need to be able to recruit and retain mm -hmm. staff. What was the need for the additional positions in on the athletic budget? Like some, like one I saw went from five to eight, or is it, does it just look that way on paper because of how it was paid out last year? And that's how it was submitted to me. I didn't put any increases. That's how many coaches for that sport that was submitted to pay. Is there one specific? Um, well, like like uh, under football, the sub varsity yeah. assistant. Uh, yeah, under varsity yes, assistant. It went from five to eight. And the varsity assistant went from seven to eight. I see what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, I don't. What was the need for more staff? Uh, I don't know that it's more necessarily. They did away with the C team. You see how it has zero now? 
So I think they just rolled them up into the. Well, I mean, he's saying it's an additional fifteen thousand. So, I mean, is it a roll up or is it actual additional staff? Well, you don't see they went to zero on the CT. I'm guessing. I, I, Coach Scriven isn't here for me to ask him, but that's my guess is that they took and rolled those coaches that were going C team up in there. And just kept. Well, there was only one one person from C team, so that would just. I don't know how many was on C team. It says one right here. It says one. Where does it say one? Oh, on the last on the last year. It says fund positions one for six thousand dollars. So I mean, if you rolled up, it would have just rolled up to six. They rolled up to eight, so still there's two more. There was one extra one. Two. The one from the C team. Uh, and, and then you said there was six, and there's eight now. There was five. There was eight now. There was five. Oh, you're six. Come on. No, I did not. Five. Either way, I don't know. I said five. I don't know. Like I said, I don't. I don't know that part. Um, I was just I wondering can, what was the up. what was the need for for that. Um, it's just some of them. most of them just rolled up. Maybe one extra person, but I was just wondering uh, what was the need for any additional staff. Like right here, we went from five people to eight, so that's an additional fifteen thousand. I, I was just asking. I mean, I know that's not a lot of money, but just a question to ask. It should have gone down, you would think, because we eliminated the ninth grade team. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I said. The C team went away. That's why I thought it, why that increased. I thought that she, it's not, mathematically, it's not the same from last year that was on there. So I, I, I can find out and let you know some other time. But Coach Griffin, obviously, you know, for me to ask. So, in essence, we can make the motion with the amendments of getting this information. Is that? I mean, you, yeah, but what Mr. Morgan says, is we kind of want to identify what? Specific, yeah. Yeah, specifics, yeah. Because of the, fact, the reason I asked that question is, is you can't really, if, if they, Done their team doing something that says they've right. gone through everything. You can't just say, all right, Mr. Morgan, cut me two million and come back and see me Monday because they've already, in their minds, cut everything that they could cut. So you kind of, we kind of have to, and that's the hard part about getting this thing when you do, and you don't, you know, you can ask questions, but it's hard to sit in a public meeting and say, uh, well, why, why do we need this person? And they're, they're, they're not here to defend themselves <laughs> either. It's why, you know, uh, it's hard to it's hard to do that, but we can identify, you know, anything you want to identify, and tell Miss Morgan to cut it or make changes to it to get this thing passed. I really wish we had more time. I wish we'd had a budget workshop. This is the first yeah. year we haven't had a budget workshop in a long time. Uh, because we weren't sure we were having a budget, we had to do the resolution first. <laughs> I know, but most of the time, all this is ironed out in a budget workshop, and then then by the time fresh reading comes, it's Still, maybe not uh, gravy, but it's easier because you have time to ask questions. You have time to go about the drawing board. And here we're on crunch time central, like I said when we started, that we really need to pass it. On another note, that it, it doesn't really matter to me, but there's three uh, board members. Uh, well, one's already gone. And two of us are rolling off. Uh, there will be new board members. If we don't pass the budget tonight, the, the new board, which there will be three new board members, We'll sit down, they'll, they'll make a motion to do board officers in their next order of businesses to pass the $84 million budget. That's not fair to them. No. And that's not, the, I, if y'all put me in that spot, I would have to recuse myself. So basically, you're going to be down to five if you do that. And so all five of you have to be in agreement. That's why it's important to try to make something pass tonight. I don't want to stay here. Any lady don't have to either, but I, I really want to get this thing passed in some form, however we have to do it. Because it's not fair to make them wait. Um, so we we need to. And on the other side, you know, there'll, there'll be questions that come up after tonight that between now and second reading, and we need to be transparent with those too. As far as you know, I don't want to pass a budget tonight and then walk out here and say, well. 
I didn't want to say it, but Miss Morgan, can you cut this or that? I mean, it needs to, we need to do it. If, if we need to cut it or not, the money's there in fund balance um, to pass the budget with no millage increase, with everything here. And the money's there. It's not that it isn't there. It's just you got 7.3 left. That would be. Yeah, but you know that the next two years aren't going to be easy for public schools anyway on the funding side. So no. it's not like we're not going to need that $7 million. That's, that's all we have. That's where the mills come in. And I don't see a position on here. I mean, if I, you know, if I take Dr. Paul at his word that we don't, that we don't need, right? So if we have this elevator program, then we're going to need these pair of pros to run it. No choice. No choice. If we already, if we already know that we, that's what we're doing. If and that's then, the choice we're making, then we're going to have to have these pair of pros. And the reason we put that in the budget already is because even if we don't do the elevator. You're still going to have to put a body in those classes. You're still going to pay for those regardless. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm just saying, I don't, we can't just say, okay, right, right. We, we can't do the pair of those. Um, the athletic trainer, we talked about that need mm -hmm. for months, so that's that. Right. This parking lot attendant, I mean, we all saw the instant reports that, you know, kids sitting out in the car doing things they shouldn't be doing instead of being in class. Um, these two APs, I mean, that's the need, right? Mm -hmm. And those at the top are not in your numbers. They're that one line item item. Right. Um, the 700. They are not in the budget. Right. Is teacher assistant at Blacksburg Primary? I'm assuming that that's. They've had increased enrollment. Yep, yeah, they had another teacher down too. Are there any positions on this list that we can pay out of other funds? That would be a question for Ms. Westmoreland and Dr. Rose on their position because they have... I mean, do we have any? There's not, because there, we, we already have positions, like she said, we have about two to three hundred other positions on other accounts that we already paid for. We have in excess of over $13 million of payroll that's paid out of other funds right now. That they can answer that better than I can on their so posted or that are on the list. We move some. Yes. At what point do we uh did our bond rating get affected by the fund balance? What will we what will that point be reached? Well we don't that would be effective if we go on fiscal watch. If we can't maintain the 8.33 percent level. Did you hear her, Dr. Nix? Can she, can you repeat that for me? She, she said that um, that would happen if we went on fiscal watch, if we couldn't maintain that 8.33 um, balance. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. But every time we pass another four million dollar budget, that eight point three three goes up too. It does. Every time your budget goes up, that eight point three three number goes up. And, and taking money out of fund balance is going down. Yeah. And they're going to be pretty soon. You can't sustain. Yeah, you, but you I'm constantly But, on but being options. realistic, and it's not a surprise to anybody here or watching that I'm not wild about raising millage twelve mills. I'm not. However. Um, Looking at the budget, I mean, the, the disheartening thing to me is even if you raise the 12 mills, we're still not passing. But so, if there comes a point in time when you say, all right, the maximum millage we can do every year, we should never even try to pass anything higher than that. Once you because, can catch up with three years, then but you, I mean, you can pass each one. But you can't catch up ever. If, if you raise 12 mils and you say, all right, look, because I keep hearing it, and I've said it, I came to board meetings, I listened, everybody should raise it a couple mils a year. I still agree with that strategy, raise it a couple mils a year. But as I added up earlier, 
it was raised 15 mils over three years. So if we raised a couple mils a year, that gets us back to eight years. And we raise a couple mils a year, we raise a couple mils. What I'm saying is, we raised 12 mils this year. It's going to, I don't have my sheet, but. 1.6 million. 1.6 million. It doesn't, doesn't even offset. We're still a million short if you had the FTEs. If you did. If you, you raise your up. So, so this is not, and I'm, you know, doing this is not sustainable at all. You can't, we can't say, because even if you say, everybody says, well, the answer is raising millets. That's not the answer. We can raise it all we want to raise, but next year we're going to be four more. If, if, if history repeats itself, we're going to be a few million more dollars in the hole. We can only raise it 12. And if we raise it 12 this year, you won't even be able to raise it 12 next year, more than likely. So you're going to be back again next year, and you're going to, so you're going to pull another million or two, and you're going to pull another million or two. It's not, this, this is not sustainable. There's no way. And that's why in the past, it's not that I don't agree with a million increase, I do. I know that things have gone up. The utilities went up. That has to be paid for. I'm fine with it. Power bill went up. I have to pay for it. That's fine. But the thing I don't agree with is to keep raising the millage 12 mils and keep coming back the next year, or 6 mils or 8 mils, and keep coming back the next year and saying, well, we raised it, but man, it didn't even put a dent in it. We're 2 more million. We're 2 more million. We're 2 more million. We're, Money is not going to fall out of the sky. It's not that you have to you have to cut it. That's the only way that it has to be cut. The, and I, I understand that all these are needed. I agree with you. I think we're in a terrible spot because everything on this list, unfortunately, is pretty much needed. But where it has to be cut, and I think we've done a lot of it, is back in contract season in February when you don't offer these people their contracts or you, you when people leave, we don't back to their spot. I think we've done that. But as we keep going, you, we've got, this is not a sustainable funding. If you run a business like this, nobody could run a business like this. You couldn't run, you couldn't run, you couldn't say, if I ran my business like this, uh, I would be sitting at home completely unemployed and broke. Because there's no way that you can constantly say, well, I'm better look next. I mean, I'm a Gamecock fan, I'm saying that. And I'm a better look next year type of guy. <laughs> okay? Uh, and, and I mean, and I'm telling you, this is not sustainable at all. This is not sustainable. And and we can raise mill millage. I'm, I'm really tired. I mean, we can raise millage all you want to raise. We can raise 12 mills from here on to eternity. But if we can't pass a budget that the millage actually covers, it don't matter what you raise millage. So we're just throwing away money. And so, I mean, I don't mind about passing the budget. I think we need to pass it. I'm going to, my, my skipping ahead to the next thing is, I'm not going to vote on a millage increase tonight. Uh, you may can talk me into it by the second reading. What I want to see is, let's talk about it and let's see where the actual meaningful millage increase is going to go, where it's going to cover. If we need all these spots or if we need to cover utilities and utilities went up $100,000, 135, that's one mil, talk me into it. I'll go a mill to cover utilities. What I'm not wild about covering is $787,000 worth of stuff that we're adding in the budget without cutting $787,000 worth of stuff. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying it's not my job at my $153 every two weeks here to determine that, but it, but it is my job to pass, in my head, a balanced budget of some sort. Last year, I felt like, hey, we're 1.2 million to the bad, but you stood there and said, I think if we do it, we won't have to spend our money out of fund balance, and we didn't. We passed the budget, we raised the millage, it didn't have to come out of fund balance, good to go. We escaped another year, right? I don't feel like we're going to be able to do that this year with two point whatever million. No, it's too much. It's too much. It's not going to happen. So with that being said, I don't feel comfortable about passing a two point something million dollars. So that's why I asked why, you know, what we need to do to cut. And I mean, I don't know the answer to these spots because I feel like we're in a terrible spot with being this late in the school year where you can't go back on contracts and you can't really do anything. So for this year, in my head, my only solution is to pay out a fund balance. Mm. And then you're going back, back to what we're talking about. But in my head, the only way that you're ever going to stop the bleeding is to stop the cost up front. Mm. And the only way we can do that is in February. It isn't in August. We can't, we can't do it in July and August. You can't do it. If you were in a business, if you were ten, ten and don't have contracts, if they're not making ball bearings and they have a, they, they can lay off their whole line. We can't do that. We have contracts. These people, 
it's not a good spot to be in. Uh, I agree with what you said, Mr. Davis, and I can tell you from my position, whatever you guys come up with, millage-wise, and whatever that difference is, then you hold me accountable to find that money for the next year. I mean, I don't know what else to say, and I bring those positions in January and say, hey, here's where we save them. I mean, because honestly, there is, it's, there really isn't much you can cut out at this point. And, and, and yes, I, there, there's not 50 to 100 positions like I told Ms. Shackford, but there are some things that we can change and do differently, and, and it, you can make a little bit of savings. Under the new position, what is the difference in the assistant principal over at Blacksburg and the assistant principal you're trying to get for Carmen's great deal? Blacksburg is, both of them are shared. They yeah, I know, but one of them is sixty nine thousand, and one of them we pay eighty one thousand. I think she just took a guesstimate on the amounts. We don't know what it's going to be until we hire that person. But still, why would why would there be a difference? I don't know. Because see, that's what I think. In inconsistencies like that, in salaries can and they, things like that, can, can be a problem. I'm sorry. Can you what? I didn't explain it to you another way. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I don't know what 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 we're gonna do, Matt, because we need to do we need to take action tonight. We don't want to raise millage. I'm not saying don't raise. I'm just saying we're not gonna put put twelve mills. Uh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm heard you. I'm not speaking for myself. I, I, I got you. Okay. I've seen I've seen two years. What to address in here? Do you like new change? Well. I've said through 20 years of this, and we have everything back in the past. We've turned it back, told them to go balance the budget, and come back with it. We've, I mean, we've done all sort of ways. That's when all those years we went, we cut programs and teachers and things like that, and it was bad. I, I'm not going to say that. I mean, you know, we've done what we had to do to get a, a budget as best we could with what we had. We didn't raise a lot of millions and things, but we didn't. Just like I was talking a while ago, we've got one, one, one meal right now. We have to raise or we lose it. We kept losing, but we wasn't collecting them in advance. No, I'm, and I'm fine, Mr. Blackwell. What I'm, what I'm saying, 1.1 1 .1 meals, if we lose it, talk me into it, I'm good. All right? 1.1 1 .1 meal, I'm good. If you tell this one up one meal, I'm good. I'm good. That's 2.1 meal. I can go back and justify that to myself. That's just life. When you go to eat, it's higher than it was. I get it. That's, if you want to go eat, you're paying for it. That's fine. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to pay double for my food because an extra person brought it to me. I'm still going to eat the same steak for the same price. And it might go up a little bit and I'm okay with it. But I'm not going to pay somebody else to bring it to me just because we needed that person. So what I'm saying is at the end of the day, uh, I mean, and it's the reason I asked about how to direct that is it's not, it's, it's hard to say, well, you know, we don't want these people or, whatever um, because I'm not in the spot. I don't think that I should have the power to tell Dr. Rose what she needs in her her office. I'm not there every day. I, I don't I don't think I should. So, okay, so we, we we're not we're not we don't have enough of the knowledge here at board members to say we can cut this or cut yeah, that. I don't want to just pick off this list and These say, oh we don't need a Spanish teacher. I'm not that's not what I'm here to do. But I, I mean but at this point, you can't cut anything because of contracts, right? I mean, oh, there's no I'm not, can I answer that question? I'm, I'm not targeting the Scholars Academy, but this just has to make sense to me, okay? So, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong we have four teachers. And those classes, the, the purpose of it is giving them the college experience, just in a different area of Gaffney, correct? That's part of it. Okay. So those teachers can be moved to Gaffney High School to teach the same curriculum, correct? Yes, we no. put any they can. They, okay, so you're not, you're not dismembering the Scholars Academy, you're just relocating to save money? Is that an option? We have that currently with dual moment. That's basically what dual moment is. We have kids on campus that are taking college classes right now on their high school campus. Okay, again, 
Would it save any money? It, this year, it would save the 38, what would you get the thing down to? 30, 37000 $37, dollars 375 would save the least. I think what Ms. Shippey is asking is, would that, if we move those four teachers, would it fill four vacancies of teachers we can't fill? Yes. And cut four. Thank you. It's a 50 of science right off the bat because we've got, we're paying it right here. You, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to fill all those vacancies though because that science teacher is still going to teach the college level courses that they're teaching, the AP courses. And they're still going to teach those courses so you're not going to make up anything on this and you might pick up a section or two but you're not going to pick up a full teacher. Because they're still going to do the, if you're saying just move it over here and do the same things, right. they're still going to teach those same courses. On average, how many kids are in class at the Scott Academy? Um, around 16. Yeah. 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 So earlier when you were saying, we have some and they're taking these AP classes that only have 15 or 16 kids that we can cut, but well, you're not willing to cut the Scott Academy. Don't have no, I'm kids. saying that it will pick up some sections. But it won't, it won't necessarily wipe out a full science teacher because they're still going to teach those AP courses.
Clancy wanted to take that, but she didn't want to go to Scottish Academy, so that would allow her to take that class at Gaffney High with those other kids. They're not necessarily in the Scottish Academy, but they could take that class, that block, with that teacher, could they not? That's just like Bill and Roland. It's just like anything. Why could they not? They could. Yeah, so you would fill up that 25 kids in that class. You'd get nine more kids that don't, don't have the option to take it right now. Option to take it. That's what I'm saying. You you may be able to absorb some sections, but you're not yeah. necessarily going to wipe out a full teacher. No, I, that's I, my point. I get that. And, and you're not going to save any money this year except for the 36 five. Like you say, you're yeah. talking about yeah. a third of a meal, so that's not, not a big deal. That's just in the future. And the principal for that is how much? Last year, last year was a, what was it last year? I don't know, they that's, I think we said it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I okay. think you can tell the salary of the director, yeah. They put personnel. The person I mean, it's almost, the paper. Yeah, I think you can tell the salary of the personnel. That, that purse thing you hear in the morning was so... Well, no, I'm just making a point. I just want to know how much that dollar amount would be. Not necessarily that person, but just in general. Well, if you just take an administrator and add the benefits, you're probably 80, 90 grand, somewhere in that range okay. with the benefits and everything. Is that a fair assessment? So there would be saved as well. That's around 120. That's around 120. So that's another range, correct? Yeah. Correct? So that will be a savings as well. Once again, this person. If that's not backfield or reason. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's why I Okay, so we have some money here and then we should move around.
That, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you because otherwise you're going to cut stuff away. That's the only option you have right now is to cut out those positions that are up there, the 700, cut the raises for the people, the 2% and the 4%, uh, and the step increase. Cut that stuff out. That's the only real option right now. But that still doesn't get you to zero. Unless someone has a different idea. I mean, there just isn't nothing there. And just like you and Mr. Davis both said a minute ago, I mean, those are positions that are needed without a doubt. It's not like we're trying to fluff something and give extra. They're needed. Um, there's nothing extra per se. There's no fluff. There's no... I mean, like I said, you either cut those out and, and the, the only one that you know, and once again, it's up to you all how you feel about it, but the athletic side, if you don't want to change those supplements and stuff, then that goes back to how, I mean, there's just, but that, once again, you're talking. Yeah, it's not a lot of money. It's just, it was That's That's, there, there's not, <laughs> there's not big chunks anywhere is my point. And the only place you can pull big chunks at this point is with personnel. So this budget includes all personnel changes already, or no? No, this budget to includes degree. as many as we knew at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. let's start giving me some real answers. <laughs> and it includes the 10 positions estimated there. Yeah. That's not the top. These things are like our back is against the wall. We're really going to have to show us what's the time to change. Uh, to email uh, yeah. them. Yeah. Is Making. Yes. It does? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Sam. Hold you accountable for finding it today. Dr. Fox, you said we're going to hold you accountable for finding it. I'll find it, trust me. Okay. So, you may not like what I find, but I'm going to find it. No, if it's a reasonable one, you have it. Make that motion, Mr. Chairman. What was that? You make the motion. I, would, I don't typically make a motion as board chair. I have never. It'll be my one and only, because I'll be gone next meeting. But I will make the motion that we approve the first reading of the 22-23 general fund budget. Do I have a second? I have a second. Dr. Nick, second. Any discussion? Are we going? Are we going to be sending? Uh, I guess you might say information to them, Dr. Fall, of anything we think we do, we think we ought to do. I, mean, I, I think, think he needs to be working on it a little bit before we're next week. I think we've got to identify those things if we're going to identify mm -hmm. them and tell Miss Morgan on what we need to do. Um, I, I, mean, I agree with you, and we can send that message. But as far as he's. You can't, you can't send them individually because the board he said, to he said he's going to take accountability to find it. The next item on the agenda is millage increase, and we'll see what he has to find. That's why I made the motion. I'm putting it on Dr. Paul. So you're going to find it between now and two weeks, not next no, week? No, 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 no. No, he said he's going to find this money between now and the next budget time. When it comes time for March, this $2 million is going to look a lot better. That's what he said. I'm going to let him do it. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? And this, let me, let me make my, I guess this didn't have the, I'm going to include the additional FTE request expense, not the, so it'll actually be, uh, I don't have that number, 80, what's the total number included? The total included the additional FTEs? Yeah. 2.56297. Oh, I know that, what's the total of the budget? 84? Total budget is 
what that difference is from what it was well before they done the 25 second line. Even with the rigs. Now we're just making a motion to increase it, not the amount to increase it, correct? No, you didn't give me the amount. Huh? So if you want five mils, four mils, zero mils, three mils, you have whatever. To, you have to tell them now. Now, what if that amount changes? Uh, can that, how does that work? What For instance, if, if uh, we voted tonight to do a zero mil increase, and then we determined that on the second reading that after review it needed to go to six mills. How does that work? I think you only have to vote on the millage increase one time, but that affects my numbers because it increases your local revenue. Mm -hmm. And it, it will decrease what I would show coming out of the general fund. I understand, but do you have to do 15 days again? That's what I'm asking. Not for millage increase. That's the budget rating is my understanding. It's okay. only 15 days in 20. Again, did you understand that if it gets Monday's paper, that's only a 14 day till we meet? No, I understand. What I'm saying is if it changes between now and the next meeting, what is what happens? That's what Do I'm you saying. have to wait another 14 days? No, because you're not talking about budget and total. That just changes two numbers and it balances it out the same. It would not change your total budget number, it just increases my revenue.
if it doesn't pass unanimous, I think we'd be kind of uh, in a bad shape, you know, because another, <laughs> when everybody returns, they can vote something totally different. That's why I'm asking about it, about if it changes. Let's just say the other board members come back and they say no, and there's five of them that say no, then it's going to change. That's what I'm asking. So, in other words, if you voted on millage increase tonight of six meals or whatever, right. and, and they the come board. back and you can vote again, you know. Right. Vote. That's what I'm saying. So, we've only got five of us sitting here and one of the phone. So, it had to be four out of five tonight, because three, right. if you do the math, it's going to take four. A four and four tie Robert Schultz's order uh, loses. So, five people have to agree on raising whatever village is here tonight, pretty much. Is it the point by which we to take a question? Mm -hmm. We'll get this question. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Don't be afraid. We're not going to do anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just might. <laughs> <laughs>
We have been in executive session for the discussion of personnel matters for the purpose of discussing the employment discipline or release of an employee or employees of the district slash contractual matters. Do we have a motion to return to open session? Second. Motion, Ms. Shackelford. Second. Second. Mr. Blackwell, all in favor? We are back in open session. Any action needed from executive session? There is none. Do I have a motion we approve personnel recommendations? Motion to approve personnel recommendations. Motion, Ms. Dawkins. Second. Second, Ms. Shackelford. Any discussion? All in favor for the approval of personnel recommendations? That is unanimous. Uh, Dr. Nix is no longer on the phone, so it will just be us five voting on that. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is adjournment. Do I have a motion we adjourn? So moved. Motion, Ms. Shackelford. Second. Second, Ms. Dawkins. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.